This presentation is the chi-square test for contingency tables part two. So here's our question. Is there a relationship between where college students live and how much alcohol they consume? So the null hypothesis will be college student living situation and alcohol consumption rate are independent, which means one does not influence, one does not affect, one is not correlated with the other. HA, college student living situation, and alcohol consumption rate are related. So in other words, if you know something about one variable, you may be more likely to predict what's going to happen to the other variable. So here's our data. We have three types of college students, students who live on campus, students who live by themselves off campus, or students who live with their parents. And then we have five categories of drinking, abstainers, light drinkers, light to moderate drinkers, moderate to heavy drinkers, and heavy drinkers. And this data was published in the article that is on the bottom of the slide. So the question is, will we indeed see a relationship between these two variables? And to answer that question, we're going to need to compute the chi-square statistic, and we will do that with Excel. So we want to find all of our expected numbers. Our observed numbers are up here. We're going to fill in the expected numbers the usual way. The row number times the column number divided by the total number. And we'll continue with that pattern equals the row number times the column number divided by the total. We'll do one more. Equals the row number times the column number divided by the total. And to save ourselves some time, I will do the rest of this. So continuing with the second row equals the row number times the column number divided by the total. Do one more from this row equals the row number times the column number divided by the total. So I've completed the second row. Now we'll start in the third row equals the row number times the column number divided by the total equals the row number times the column number divided by the total. And that continues with three more. So looking at our numbers, we have our observed numbers in the table up here. We have the expected numbers here. You'll notice there are some pretty significant differences. We expected 46 on-campus students to obtain abstain but 54.6 on-campus students abstained. We expected 17 off-campus students to abstain, but 25.5 off-campus students abstained. We expected 43 who lived with their parents to abstain, and many fewer actually did. So we indeed see some sort of difference between what we expect and what actually happens. Now next, we're going to have to construct our test statistics. So I'll need all the observed numbers and all the expected numbers in a table. So we're going to need O minus E, observed minus expected squared divided by expected. So we're going to go ahead and do that for each one of these elements equals parentheses, observed, minus expected, squared, divided by expected, and we get that number. And we will go ahead and scroll that over to all five categories. Let's do the same thing in the second row. Equals observed, minus expected squared divided by expected scroll that over and we have one more equals observed third row minus expected squared divided by expected and we will scroll that over. So you'll notice we have 
very large numbers here in our abstain category. And before we continue, we have to make sure that the numbers in each expected cell are relatively high. We'd like them to be at least five, and indeed that is the case. If we have expected numbers that are small, that could be a problem for us. Now we want to sum up all of those numbers to get our chi-square statistic. So our chi-square statistic will equal the sum of all of the numbers in my observed minus expected squared over expected table. And what will that give me? That will give me 30.299. So again, our test statistic chi-square is the sum of the observed minus expected squared over expected. And we've seen that that's 30.299. We need to get our degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is the number of rows minus 1 times the number of columns minus 1. There were three rows because there were three types of living conditions. Students could have been on campus, off campus, or with their parents, three minus one. And there were five columns that we could have, abstain, light, light to moderate, moderate, heavy. Five categories there, five columns, five minus one is four, three minus one is two. We have eight degrees of freedom. So knowing chi-square and the degrees of freedom, at this point we're going to go ahead and find our p-value. Remember, if chi-square is zero, that means we have exactly what we would expect to have if the data sets were independent. So the further out chi-square is, the greater chi-square is, the more evidence that it's not independent. This is a one-tailed test. We're going to find the area to the right of the test statistic. That will be our p-value. And I will use the applet mentioned on the bottom of the slide to get that p-value. So we have 8 degrees of freedom. And we are looking for the area to the right of 30.299. And then we'll say compute. And we will get a visual. And you'll recognize the 30.299, 30.3 way out here. This is telling me that the only thing to the right of that is 0 0.0002. So not very much. That's going to be a relatively small p-value. So if our p-value is 0 0.0002, we recognize that's very small. And let's think about what that means. If we would assume that student living situation and alcohol consumption were independent, the chances of getting data like I have just by random chance is two parts in 10,000. And since that's so low, we say, well, maybe it wasn't random chance. Maybe what we're assuming is wrong. Maybe we should not assume that living situation and alcohol consumption are independent. Maybe instead they are related. So again, in our conclusions, we say since the p-value is small, we reject H0. And how do we state that in context? We say that we have sufficient evidence to conclude that student living situation and alcohol consumption are not independent. There seems to be a relationship between where students live and how much alcohol they consume. Let's go ahead and verify our results on Minitab. So I have put the data in columns C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. Recall C1 were light drinkers, excuse me, C1 were abstainers, C2 were light, C3 were light to moderate, C4 was moderate to heavy, and C5 was heavy. Row 1 were folks who lived on campus, row 2 were folks who lived off campus by themselves, and row 3 were people that lived with their parents. So we have the data listed in Minitab. The command that we're going to ask Minitab to do is simply CHISQ chi-square for data in which columns for data in C1 through C5. And then we will let Minitab do that. We'll see what the results look like. And you'll notice that we have a lot of information here. We have our observed numbers on top. We have our expected numbers in the middle. And then our numbers on the bottom are observed minus expected squared divided by expected. So if I would add up all of those numbers, that's going to give me my chi-square. So my chi-square again is 30.299 with 8 degrees of freedom. 
and to three decimal places our p-value is zero. So that agrees with what we had with our own computation and again since the p-value is small we reject h naught. We reject the fact that the two variables are independent and that shows us evidence of a relationship between where students live and how much alcohol they consume. And that will conclude this presentation.